Revelation 9, verse 1 to 11. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, and they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running to battle. They had tails like scorpions, and, they scor um, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months, and they had, as king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. Well, hello, and welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to have a look at two posts I made here on my community section um, which has to do with devouring locusts that devour our scriptures. We are warned against these um, locusts in Revelation, this locust army that comes and devours your inheritance. Let us read what I wrote there. I said there, beware of locusts who very cleverly seek to devour the spiritual inheritance we have received and take us back to the spiritual famine that is Judaism, meaning make your Bible smaller by excluding more and more of it until the whole New Testament is gone. Rightly, it is prophesied that they appear as helpful angels of light. First, they help you get rid of Paul's teaching. Without Paul revealing the hidden things of the gospel and how works cannot stay safe, we steadily go back to that old prophet who soon enough puts a prayer shawl and a kippah on us, or maybe a hijab. And then the lion kills us, meaning we eventually deny Christ also, for the letter of the law kills spiritually. Please read 1 Kings 13. Beware of that old prophet who deceives the man of God who turned away from the false altar but fell back into the oldest deception, the one Christ made you free of, which is law-keeping, Torahism. Here I made another post. We are not to obey Torah anymore but obey Jesus Christ now. The Torah itself says so in Deuteronomy 18, verse 15 to 19, and this is confirmed in the New Testament in Hebrews 1, verse 1 to 4. When you say obey Torah, it means obey Moses, not obey Jesus. That is what it means, but you will say, no, I am obeying Jesus by obeying Torah, but that is not true, and you have started on the slippery slope of falling away. When one starts to believe you must merit anything, you start a slow process of falling away while you think you serve God. First you go against what Paul so clearly taught, namely the revelation that grace is by faith. Then once you start doing Torah, you are in danger of getting rid of Jesus also. And so a locust is devouring your Bible 
and soon you have only the Old Testament. Be warned. Let us read what is said to us in Deuteronomy 18, which is the Torah, which people seek to obey. If they seek to obey, why do they not obey this that's part of the Torah? It says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me, being Moses, from your midst, from your brethren. Him shall you hear, according to all you desired of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, nor let me see this great fire any more, lest I die. The Lord says, yeah, he will raise up a prophet. Him shall you hear. Hebrews 1 repeats this. Hebrew 1 from verse 1. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things. So all the prophets and and what was written in the Old Testament is subservient to the words of that prophet because Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all of them, the whole scripture of, that we call Old Testament is testifying of Jesus. We are to follow Jesus, not the Torah, because following Torah is following Moses and Moses himself um, spoke what God said that we should hear Jesus alone. If we continue in Deuteronomy 18, it says, Yeah, and the Lord said to me, What they have spoken is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them. All I command him. Remember what Jesus said. He kept saying he is only speaking the words of the Father. He's not speaking of himself. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. You see? So, if you fall back into Torah, then this locust is going to be released from the pit because the seal on your forehead is the seal of the Holy Spirit and it is worshipping the Lord in spirit and truth, not here nor there, not in Jerusalem, not through all manner of um, patterns which have been fulfilled by Jesus Christ, Feasts and days and new moons and Sabbaths, which are only a pattern of the better things to come. We can read in the book of Hebrews that Jesus Christ is the better things to come. And Jesus is heir of all things. And we in Christianity have become the heir of all things. But Satan seeks to steal your inheritance. He wants to devour you. So be warned. Do not say that we must obey Torah. We must obey Christ alone.